Good day everyone! Today we are going to be discussing about the second topic in geotechnical engineering. Our topic for today is soil deposits, its origin, grain size, and shape. I will be presenting this topic to you. I am engineer Ursel G. Ferdadero. Don't forget to click like and subscribe for notifications of my next uploads about the geotechnical engineering. During the planning, design, and construction of foundations, embankments, and earth retaining structures, engineers find it helpful to know the origin of the soil deposit over which the proposed structure is to be built, since each soil deposit has its own unique physical attributes. Most of the soils that cover the surface of the earth are formed by weathering of rocks. The physical properties of the soil are dictated primarily by the minerals that constitute the soil particles and, hence, the rock from which it is derived. The mineral grains that form the solid base of a soil aggregate are the product of the weathering. The size of the individual grains varies over a wide range. Many of the physical properties of soil are dictated by the size, shape, and chemical composition of the grains. To better understand these factors, one must be familiar with the basic types of rocks that form the Earth's crust, the rock-forming minerals, and the weathering process. On the basis of their mode of origin, rocks can be divided into three basic types the igneous, sedimentary, and metaphoric. We may begin with the cycle where the molten magma cools and thus produces igneous rocks. These rocks became subject to attack, particularly near at the Earth's surface by the environmental agents such as water, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and temperature changes. Additional factors such as chemical actions, organisms, wind, water, and ice may move the looser materials. The transported materials will ultimately be dropped in a form generally classified as sedimentary deposits. A portion of such deposits may cement and consolidate into sedimentary rock, while others precipitate during the transportation into sedimentary beds of fragmented materials. Still, other parts of the transported sediments may remain in a form of solution, as evidenced by the salts in the oceans and seas. Subjected to new environmental impositions of pressure and heat, some of the sedimentary deposits will be transformed into metaphoric rocks. Other parts of these sedimentary deposits may be subjected again to weathering and disintegration, transportation, forming a new generation of secondary rocks and fragmented materials and deposit. The metaphoric rock may again be melted and form into magma. And also, the igneous rock may also melt and form into a magma. While other igneous rock may be subjected to heat and pressure and be transformed into metaphoric rocks. While the metaphoric rocks may also be again subjected to weathering and nitification, and the sedimentary rock may compact as a form of sediment due to compaction and cementation. And that cycle continues. And that is the rock cycle. Excessive pressure and heat may result in melting of virtually all rocks, resulting in new igneous rocks. Hence, a new geologic or rock cycle begins again as an ongoing process. Indeed, a volcanic action provides us with rather direct proof that the interior of the earth is still in a molten state and under a high heat and pressure. Cracks and faults in the earth's crust may permit this molten magma, commonly referred to as a lava, to permeate upward into the cross formation or at the surface in the form of volcanic eruptions. The magma or lava that cools at the surface forms extrusive igneous rock. That form within the crust is commonly referred to as intrusive igneous rock.
Intrusive rocks formed in the past may be exposed to the surface as a result of continuous process of erosion of the materials that once covered them. Types of igneous rock formed by the cooling of magma depend on factors such as the composition of the magma and the rate of cooling associated with it. Igneous rocks are formed by the solidification of molten magma ejected from deep within the Earth's mantle. After the ejection by either fissure eruption or volcanic eruption, some of the molten magma cools on the surface of the Earth. Sometimes, magma ceases its mobility below the Earth's surface and cools to form intrusive igneous rocks that are called plutons. Intrusive rocks formed in the past may be exposed at the surface as a result of the continuous process of erosion of the materials that once covered them. These types of rock formed by the cooling of magma depend on the factor such as the composition of the magma and the rate of cooling associated with it. The magma that cools at the surface forms extrusive igneous rocks. The trital sedimentary rocks are formed by the deposits of gravel, sand, silt, and clay formed by weathering and may become compacted by overburdened pressure and cemented by agents like iron oxide, calcite, dolomite, and quartz. Cementing agents are generally carried in solution by groundwater and they fill the spaces between the particles and form sedimentary rocks. The trital sedimentary rocks has a plastic texture. Chemical sedimentary rocks are formed by chemical processes. It may have a plastic and non-plastic texture. Some examples of chemical sedimentary rocks are limestone, rock salt, dolomite, and gypsum. These are some examples of sedimentary rock, conglomerate, breccia, mudstone, shale, and sandstone. Here in the figure, you can see examples of metamorphic rocks. Quartzite, slate, marble, gneiss, schist, and serpentinite. Metamorphic rocks has a foliated texture. It generally contains large quantities of quartz and feldspar. It undergoes the process of metamorphism. Metamorphism is the process by changing the composition and texture of rocks without melting by heat and pressure. Weathering Weathering is the process of breaking down rocks by mechanical and chemical processes into smaller pieces. We have two types of weathering. It is mechanical weathering and chemical weathering. Mechanical weathering may be caused by the expansion and contraction of rocks from the continuous gain and loss of heat, which results in ultimate disintegration. Frequently, water seeps into the pores and existing cracks in the rocks. As the temperature drops, the water freezes and expands. The pressure exerted by ice because of volume expansion is strong enough to break down even large rocks. Other physical agents that help disintegrate rocks are glacier ice, wind, the running water of streams and rivers, and the ocean waves. It is important to realize that in mechanical weathering, large rocks are broken down into smaller pieces without any change in the chemical composition. In chemical weathering, the original rocks are transformed into new minerals by chemical reactions. Water and carbon dioxide from the atmosphere form carbonic acid, which reacts with the existing rock minerals to form new minerals and soluble salts. Soluble salts present in the groundwater and organic acids form from decayed organic matter also cause chemical weathering. The products of weathering may stay in the same place or may be moved to other places by ice, water, wind, and gravity. The soils formed by the weather products at their place of origin are called the residual soils. An important characteristic of residual soils is that degradation of particle size. Fine grain soil is found at the surface and the grain size increases with depth. 
At greater depths, angular rock fragments may also be found. Transported soil may be classified into several groups depending on their mode of transportation and deposition. Here is an example of glacial soils. Glacial soils are formed by transportation and deposition of glaciers. Alluvial soils, like in our feature, are transported by running water and deposited along streams. Lacustrine soils, here in our figure, are formed by deposition in quiet lakes. Marine soils are formed by the deposition in the seas. And last is the aeolian soils. Aeolian soils transported and deposited by wind. As you can see, a famous example is soils in the deserts. Irrespective of the origin of soil, the sizes of particles in general that make up soil vary over a wide range. Soils are generally called gravel, sand, silt, or clay, depending on the predominant size of particles within the soil. To describe soils by their particle size, several organizations have developed soil separate size limits. This table shows the soil separate size limits developed by the Massachusetts Institute of Technology or MIT, the U.S. Department of Agriculture or USDA, the American Association of State Highway and Transportation Officials or the ASTHO, and last is the Unified Soil Classification established by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, U.S. Bureau of Reclamation, and the American Society for Testing and Materials, or USCS. In this table, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology system is presented for illustration purposes only because it plays an important role in the history of the development of soil separate size limits. Presently, however, the unified system is almost universally, universally accepted. The Unified Soil Classification System, or the USCS, has now been adopted by the American Society for Testing and Materials. Gravels are pieces of rocks with occasional particles of quartz, feldspar, and other minerals. Sand particles are made of mostly quartz and feldspar. Other mineral grains may also be present at times. Silt are the microscopic soil fractions that consist of very fine quartz, grains, and some flake-shaped particles that are fragmented of a micaceous minerals. Clays are mostly flaky shaped microscopic and submicroscopic particles of mica, clay minerals, and other minerals. As shown in the table, clays are generally defined as particles smaller than 0.002 mm. In some cases, particles between 0.002 and 0.005 mm in sizes are also referred to as clays. Particles are classified as clay on the basis of their size. They may not necessarily contain clay minerals. Clays are defined as those particles which develop plasticity when mixed with a limited amount of water. Non-clay soils can contain particles of quartz, feldspar, or mica that are small enough to be within the clay size classification. Hence, it is appropriate for soil particles smaller than 2 micrometer or 5 micrometer as defined under different systems to be called clay size particles rather than clay. Clay particles are mostly of collodial size range of less than 1 micrometer and 2 micrometer appears to be the upper limit. Let us look at our table. Here we can see the particle size classification. 
Here are the name of the organization and here are the list of the grain size in millimeters. So to know if the soil is a gravel, sand, silt, or clay, its grain size must satisfy this condition. For example, in Massachusetts Institute of Technology or the MIT, gravel, according to them, is classified as those with greater than 2 mm grain size and sand is between 2 to 0 0.06 mm in grain size. Silt is about 0 0.006 to 0 0.002 mm and clay are those uh, those grain size with less than 0 0.002 millimeter and then the rest is just the same like for the usda gravel is greater than 2 millimeter sand is between 2 to 0 0.05 clay minerals are complex aluminum silicates composed of two basic units the silica tetrahedron and the alumina octahedron there are three important clay minerals, kaolinite, ilyite, and montmorillonite. Specific gravity is defined as the ratio of the unit weight of a given material to the unit weight of water. The specific gravity of soil solids is often needed for the various calculations in soil mechanics it can be determined accurately in the laboratory. Most of the minerals have a specific gravity that falls within the general range of 2.6 to 2.9. The specific gravity of solids of light-colored sand, which is made of quartz, may be estimated to about 2.65. For clayey and silty soil, it may vary from 2.6 to 2.9. Here are the specific gravity of some common minerals found in soil. Mechanical analysis of soil. Mechanical analysis is the determination of the size range of particles present in soil, expressed as a percentage of the total dry weight. There are two methods generally used to find the particle size distribution of a soil. The first is the sheave analysis. It is for particle sizes larger than 0.075 mm in diameter. And the second is the hydrometer analysis. It is for particle sizes smaller than 0.075 mm in diameter. Sheave analysis gives the intermediate dimension of a particle. Hydrometer analysis gives the diameter of an equivalent sphere that would settle at the same rate as the soil particle. Sheave analysis consists of shaking the soil sample through a set of sheaves that have progressively smaller openings. U.S. standard sheave numbers and the sizes of the openings are given in this table. So, if you see a sheave number, it has a corresponding size opening diameters. So, like for example, for sheave number 4, it has an opening of 4.75 mm. Therefore, soil particles larger than 4.75 mm will not pass through that sheave. It will stay in that sheave. And soil particles smaller than 4.75 mm will pass the sheave number 4. The hydrometer analysis is based on the principle of sedimentation of soil grains in water. When a soil is dispersed in water, the particles settle at different velocities depending on their shape, size, weight, and the viscosity of the water. For simplicity, it is assumed that all the soil's particles are spheres and that the velocity of soil particles can be expressed by the Stokes law according to which here is the formula where v is the velocity rho sub s is the density of soil particles rho w is the density of water d is the diameter of soil particles and this is the viscosity of water here is an example of the particle size distribution curve. As you can see on the y-axis, 
here on the y-axis we can see the percent passing of the soil and here this is in arithmetic scale and here in the x-axis we can see it is in the logarithmic scale Effective size, uniformity coefficient, and coefficient of gradation. The particle size distribution curve, like what was shown before, the previous picture, can be used to determine the following four parameters for a given soil. First, the effective size or D10. The effective size D10. This parameter is the diameter in the particle size distribution curve corresponding to 10% finer. The effective size of a granular soil is a good measure to estimate the hydraulic conductivity and drainage through soil. The uniformity coefficient. This parameter is defined as the D60 over D10. So D60 is the diameter corresponding to 60% finer. The third is the coefficient of gradation or C sub C. This parameter is defined as D30 squared over D60 times D10. And the last is the sorting coefficient. Sorting coefficient or SO, this parameter is another measure of uniformity and is generally encountered in geologic works and expressed as SO is equal to the square root of the quantity D75 over D25. So... Here in our figure, we can see the, param the parameters D10, D30, and D60. So D10 is the particle size corresponding to 10% finer. D30 is the particle size corresponding to 30% finer. And D60 is also a particle size corresponding to 60% finer. The particle size distribution curve shows not only the range of particle size present in a soil, but also the distribution of various particles. These curves are shown here in our figure. The curve 1 represents a type of soil in which most of the soil grains are the same size. This is called poorly graded soil. Curve 2 represents a soil in which the particle size are distributed over a wide range and is termed as well-graded soil. A well-graded soil has a uniformity coefficient greater than about 4, number 4, for gravels and 6 for sands and a coefficient of gradation between 1 and 3 for gravels and sands. A soil might have a combination of two or more coefficient graded fractions. Curve 3 represents such a soil, termed as a gap graded soil. Particle shape. The shape of a particle present in soil mass also has significant influence on the physical properties of a given soil. However, not much attention is paid to particle shape because it is more difficult to measure. The particle shape generally can be classified into three major categories, the bulky shape, flaky shape, and the needle shape. Bulky particles are formed mostly by the mechanical weathering of rocks and minerals. Geologists use such terms as angular, subangular, subrounded, and rounded to describe the shapes of a bulky particles, as you can see in our figure. Flaky particles have very low sphericity, usually 0.01 or less. These particles are predominantly clay minerals. Needle shaped particles are much less common than the other two particle types. Examples of soils containing needle shaped particles are sand coral deposits and atapulgite clays. Particle shape 
The size of a granular particles in a soil mass has a great influence on the physical properties of the soil, such as the maximum and minimum void ratios, shear strength parameters, compressibility, and many more. The angularity A is expressed in the form following formula, that A is equal to the average radius of corners and edges all over the radius of the maximum inscribed sphere. The sphericity of a bulky particles can be defined by default by this formula that S is equal to D sub E over L sub P, where D sub E is equivalent to the diameter of the particle equal to cube root of D 6V over pi, where L sub P is the length of the particle and V is the volume of the particle. Let us now try to apply our discussion in the following examples. Example number one, the following are the results of a sheave analysis. Here are the corresponding sheave number and the corresponding mass retained on each sheave in grams. So for sheave number four, mass retained is zero. Sheave number 10, 21.6 grams. Sheave number 20, 49.5 grams. Sheave number 40, 102.6 grams. Sheave number 60, 89.1 grams. Sheave number 100, 95.6 grams. Sheave number 200, 60.4 grams. And in the pan, it is 31.2 grams. The question is, or the requirements to solve this problem is, determine the percent finer in each sheave, then plot up, then plot a grain size distribution curve. Next is determine the D10, D30, and D60. Calculate the uniformity coefficient and calculate the coefficient of gradation. So for letter A, determine the percent finer than each sheave size and plot a grain size distribution curve. So now I have prepared a table for our problem solving. Remember in our discussion a while ago that every US sheave number has a corresponding opening in millimeter. So, so for sheave number four, the opening is the opening is 4.75 mm, and for number 10 it is 2 mm. For number 20, 0.85. 0 0.425 0 0.250 0 0.150 and 0 0.075 and pan has no openings so to compute for the cumulative mass retained above each sheave so now let us compute the cumulative mass retained above each sheave. So for sheave number 4, the mass retained is 0. And for sheave number 10, the cumulative mass retained above each sheave is 0 plus 21.6 is equal to 21.6. And for sheave number 20, the cumulative mass retained above each sheave is 21.6. 21.6 is the mass retained in number 10 plus 49.5 equal to 71.1. Next is sheave number 40, 71.1. 71.1 plus 102.6 is equal to 173.7. Next is shift number 60. 173.7 plus 89.1 is equal to 262.8 next is sheave number 100 so that is 262.8 plus 
95.6 so that is equal to 358.4 next is you achieve number 200 so that is 358.4 plus 60.4 is equal to 418.8 and then the in total so in the pan it is 418.8 plus 31.2 so that is equal to 450 so for checking purposes the summation of the total mass here is equal to 450 and the answer here at the end here is also 450 so next is to compute for the percent finer so percent finer percent finer is expressed in the following formula that f percent fine percent finer f percent finer f is equal to the summation of mass which is 450 o minus m1 plus m2 plus m sub i over summation of m times 100 so here for example the summation m is 450 so so for f number 4 shift summation m is 450 minus the cumulative mass retained in that shift over summation of mass m is 450 times 100 equal to 100 percent so this is a hundred percent so for f10 it is equal to 450 or summation m total minus cumulative mass retained above each sheet 21.6 over summation m is 450 times 100 so the answer is 95.2 percent so you will repeat the same process and you will get 84.2%, 61.4%, 41 41.6%, 20.4%, and 6.9%. So that's it. And here is the summary of our answer for letter A. So this is the percent finer that we are looking for. Next, after we get the percent finer in each shift, we can now plot a green size distribution curve. So to plot a grain size distribution curve so we will use this um, sheet to plot the grain size distribution curve so we have here the opening and the first corresponding percent finer so here here is our sheet that we will use so in the x-axis you can see the logarithmic scale of the diameter of the opening of each sheave and on the x-axis you can see the percent finer by weight so for our guide we will put the table here so 
first, let us plot the 100% and the 4.75 mm and then plot it. Next is the 95.2% and the 2 mm. Let's leave a plot. Next is the 8.85 mm to 84.2%. And then there. Next is the 61.4% and 4 and 0.425 mm and plot it here and next is um, the 41.6% to 0.25 mm opening and next is 20.4 and 0.15 mm opening and the last is 6.9% and 0.075 mm opening and then we shall trace that plot and trace dot plot and now we have our particle size distribution curve so here our particle size distribution curve is now finished so next let her be determine the d10 d30 and d60 from the grain size distribution curve there are two ways you can determine those parameters so here is the answer for your reference yeah. first is by reference to your drawing or your plot you can plot the d10 d30 and d60 in your drawing if your drawing is accurate enough and you can trust your curve to give you the closest answer yeah. or we can compute it assuming the um, formula for the slope which is rise over run okay so for our example, um, determine the D10, D30, and D60 from the green size distribution curve. Um, previously, we have determined the D10, D30, and D60 using our graphical figure. So we can just simply plot the 60% finer and determine the particle diameter corresponding to that. Um, percent finer so for d10 it is the particle diameter corresponding to 10 percent finer so for d30 it is the particle diameter corresponding to 30 percent finer and for d60 it is a particle diameter corresponding to 60 percent finer but now let us um try to solve the problem let us try to solve the problem in a in another method so for method two so here um we will use the concept of ratio and proportion so how can you do that so let us assume that the our curve is a linear by ratio and proportion or using the two points of the curve If we assume our curve to be linear and use these points and use two points as our reference here. So in here in our figure, D10 is a particle diameter corresponding to 10% finer. So 10% finer is somewhere between 20.4 and 6.9. Therefore, the particle diameter corresponding to 10% finer is between 0.15 and 0.075. So, if we plot the here,
if we say this is our point one point one with coordinates along the x logarithmic of zero point one fifty and along the y it's the but the point is twenty point four percent. So let's just omit the percent for the computation. And here, let's assume this is this is point two with coordinates. So along x, it's logarithmic of zero point zero seventy five, and y it's 6.9 so here our third point this is um, what we are looking for so along the x the particle diameter that is unknown so let's say this is point 3 so point at point 3 the along x the coordinate is let's say it's the 10 because that is what we are looking for and along the y the corresponding is 10 percent finer so this So, this drawing is corresponding to here, to this point. this point here on the graph so this is point one this is point two and here at the ten this is I'm sorry so this is corresponding to this this point here in the graph so this is point one, point two, and point three. Point two and point three. So we assume our graph to be linear. Now to solve for d10, we can use the principle of the triangles. So or the slopes. Now. Let's see. This is a triangle here and also here. Now, let's say this is Y one and here. This is Y. Two here. This is x one and here. This is x two. Now, if we look at the value of y, y one. We can say that y1 is equal to 20.4 minus 10. So that is equal to 10.4. So and then y2 
टू इज इक्वल टू ट्वेंटी पॉइंट फोर माइनस सिक्स पॉइंट नाइन सो दैट इज इक्वल टू थर्टीन पॉइंट फाइव x1 will now be equal to the rhythmic of v10 minus the rhythmic of 0.150 So since d10 is a variable, let's assume that this is an algebraic expression of x sub 1. So for x sub 2, x sub 2 is equal to logarithmic of 0 0.075 minus logarithmic of 0.150. So, for exactness of our answer, let's assume this. We will not round off this answer. So, logarithmic of 0 0.075 minus logarithmic of 0 0.150 is equal to negative 0 0.30102. Nine 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 five seven. Now you can write the by ratio and proportion by ratio and proportion Y X one over y1 is equal to is equal to x2 over y2 so the values of x1 is logarithmic of d10 Minus logarithmic of 0 0.150 over x y y1 is 10.4 and x2 is negative 0 0.3010299 five seven over y2 13.5 now if we all if we solve for d10 here if we solve for d10 If we solve for the values of d10, we will apply our knowledge in our algebra and then so we will get d10 is equal to the answer is 0 0.08794 mm now 
to ch to visually check if your answer is correct um here the values of d10 should be between 0 0.15 and 0 0.75 here in our figure so it should be the in the middle of your coordinates so kung yung coordinates mo is if your coordinates is along the x because d10 is along the x is 0 0.15 and 0 0.075 therefore your d10 should be in between those two numbers yeah. so that's it so that's the value of our d10 so now if we try to solve for d30 using the same method so let's try to um let's try to practice fast solving therefore if we imagine that the d30 will be around between 41.6 and 20.4 sorry 30% finer is between 41.6 and 20.4 therefore the d30 will be between 0 0.25 and 0 0.15 here is the d30 and this here will be the 30% and 60% is around between these two points so 60% so therefore the 60 will be between 0 0.425 and 0 0.25 but let us focus our computation to d30 now So it's between these two points. That is the thirty corresponding to thirty percent finer. So let's say we have for the small triangle, we have y1 is equal to thirty-one point six. Sorry, it's forty-one point six minus thirty, so that is equal to eleven point six. And y2 is equal to 41.6 minus 20.4. So that is equal to 21.6. x1 is equal to 30 logarithmic of d30 minus logarithmic of 0 0.250 And x2 is equal to logarithmic of 0 0.250 minus logarithmic of 
zero point two fifty minus logarithmic of zero point one five. So then, if we buy by ratio and proportion again, we have y, we have x1 over y1 equal to x2 over y2 x1 is equal to logarithmic of d30 minus logarithmic of 0 0.250 all over y1 equal to 11.6 and x2 is equal to logarithmic of 0 0.25 minus logarithmic of 0 0.15 over y2 which is 21.2 then apply algebra solve for d30 You will get you will get a value of d30 is equal to 0 millimeter or d30 is equal to 0 0.331 millimeter take note that these values are only estimated values because in the first place we assumed a curved graph into a linear function now, if we solve for solve for d60, again by ratio and proportion, we have x1 over y1 over y1 is equal to x2 over y2 D60 is somewhere between these two points here. So we will use these two points. So Y1 will be equal to 61. one point four minus sixty so that is equal to one point four y two is equal to sixty one point four minus forty one point six so that is equal to 
19.8 x1 is equal to logarithmic logarithmic of d60 minus logarithmic of 0 0.425 x sub 2 is equal to logarithmic of 0 0.25 minus logarithmic of 0 0.425 this is equal to 0 0.230448 Again, but let's try x sub 1 is log d60 minus log 0 0.425 over y sub 1 1.4 equal to equal to x sub 2 so just put a value of x sub 2 here all over to y sub 2 19.8 so solve for d60 D60. Solve D60 using your calculator. We will get a value for D60 equal to 0 0.4093497805. Or if you round it off, we will get an D60 equal to 0. 4 0 9 millimeter. Do not forget the units class. And because this is in millimeter. So here are the answers. Take note that D60 is almost near to 0 0.4. 25. It's 0 0.409 because there's only a difference between 61.4 and 60 to 1.4 values. Okay, now back to our slides. As you can see, our answer um, a while ago is almost the same but not exactly the same here in our first method using the graphical method so reminder we have two methods for determining the values of d10 d30 and d60 we can use the graphical method you will plot the those values after you draw your particle size distribution curve or you may compute for those values um, assuming that the curve is a linear you will choose two points where you can um, compute the values for d10 d30 and d60 so we will apply all the linear um, theories that you can use because you assume the curve as a linear so take note that the answers are not the same so is that a wrong answer no because our answer are just estimated values so for engineering applications in our science applications um, exact values are not that much important because um, realistic estimate values or near to exact values are um, what is being used because um, exact values 
it doesn't matter if the values are exact or approximate. The important thing is those values can be used to practical applications in engineering. So, take note because and also the soil is a very wide uh, material and therefore there are a lot of assumptions that leads to the answers being not that um, exact. But that it doesn't mean that is it is not exact it is wrong um the important thing is that we compute the values realistically estimate those values and near and values we obtained are near to be exact values so that's it so if you answer a different answer because your drawing is a bit different then it's okay we have tolerance for it but make sure that your answer is very near to the right answers okay okay now for letter c calculate the uniformity coefficient c sub u so remember that the c sub u is only a ratio of d60 over d10 so d60 we will use our values obtained in our graphical computation which is d60 is equal to 0 0.41 and d10 is 0 0.09 so cu is equal to 4.56 and the last is calculate the coefficient of gradation c sub c and c sub c is equal to d30 squared over d60 times d10 so if you compute those value um, put all those values in the right places compute it using calculator then you will get c sub c equal to 0 0.90 now let's proceed to our next example our next example is um, the green size characteristics of a soil are given the size openings of each sheave is given and the corresponding percent finer previously we compute we uh, we indicate we, we still need to put the we still need to write down the size or the opening of the sheaves but now here it is given and also the percent finer remember that we also compute for the percent finer so now the size openings of each sheave is given percent finer is also given the requirements to solve this problem is first a draw the particle size distribution curve b determine the percentage of gravel sand silt and clay according to the mit system and c repeat b using usd system and d repeat b using the asto system so draw the particle size distribution curve so um we have discussed this you can do this as a practice problem at your homes um we will not uh, go into details of this but here is the particle size distribution curve for our example Next is letter B. Determine the percentage of gravel, sand, silt, and clay according to the MIT system. So we have also two methods to determine the percentage, percentage of gravel, sand, silt, and clay according to the MIT system. One again is a graphical method um, using your particle size distribution curve. You can plot the um, percent finer corresponding to gravel sand silt and clay and compute for the percentage of gravel sand silt and clay and number two is by um, solving assuming that the curve is a linear again like the previous example and we will compute the corresponding percent finer for each grain size corresponding a review um, under the MIT system in the particle grain size Gravel are those soil particles greater than 2 mm. Sand is are those around 2 to 0 0.06 mm. Silt is around 0 0.06 to 0 0.00 2 mm. And clay are those um, soil particles less than 0 0.002 millimeters. So if we use our gra our figure to find the percentage of gravel sand silt and clay according to the MIT system so we will just um, look for the passing around so we will just look for the corresponding percent passing at 2 mm 0 0.06 mm and 0 0.02 mm because that's our that are the limits using the MIT system so 
passing 2mm. So as you can see here in our figure, um, the largest size is 0.425mm. Therefore, 100% of the soil passed the 2mm. So that's here. Yeah. That is here. And then passing 0.06mm. In 0.06mm, using here in the figure, it is approximate that the corresponding percent passing in 0.06mm is 95%. So therefore, 95% of the soil passed through 0.06mm grain size. And then, next is passing 0.002mm. So here, this is the plot for 0.02mm. And according to our figure, 42% passed to 0.02mm. So here, 42%. So determine the percentage of gravel. So how can we determine the percentage of gravel? Um, look at this here. Gravel are those particle size greater than 2mm. If we look at our um, particle size distribution curve, is there any particles greater than 2 mm? There's none. So therefore, gravel is 0%. There's no gravel here in our example. And next is the sand. So sand is between 2 to 0 0.06 mm. So is there a soil that passed to around um, between 2 to 0 0.06 mm? There is. And what's the value? So it's a from 100% passing. So up. 100% passing here up to where is the 0 0.0.6 here yeah. so therefore here is the percentage of the sand so that is 100 minus 95 that is 5% so here is your sand now the silt silt is around 0 0.06 to 0 0.002 mm is there a soil that passes between those um grain size yes there is so from 0 0.06 here around here around here and then um 0 0.02 is here so that's there so here is your silt now Silt is now 95 minus 42. So this percentage now is equal to 53%. So this is 53%. So that is your silt. And clay are those of um, soil less than 0 0.02 mm. So it's about here. So this is 42 minus 0. So that's 42%. So the total of this um percentage must be equal to 100 for checking so 5 plus 53 plus 42 is equal to a hundred percent so that's how you compute for using the graphical method now let's try to use the other method it's um the analyte it's um, it's the same method previously but um, you will also use the same concept duration proportion concept but we will not go into we will not go into the details of um, figuring out how it came up to that equation so let's try so here is our previous um, previous answer using the graphical method now if we compute it using the what um, the analytical method so so just a quick review again that under MIT system, gravel are those soil particles greater than 2 mm. Sand is between 2 mm to 0 0.06 mm. Silt is between 0 0.06 to 0 0.002 mm. And clay are less than 0 0.002 mm. So, For our computation, let us assume that a value of Z or any um, variable or any letter, you can use it. But for our computations, let's, let's assume Z is equal to the percent finer corresponding to millimeter opening. 
So, since there is no percent finer corresponding to 2 mm opening, Z is equal to 0%. Next, let X be the percent finer corresponding to 0 0.06 mm opening. So, let's compute logarithmic of, let's use the points of with sizes 0 0.425, 0 0.425 with corresponding percent finer of 100% and 0 0.033 with corresponding percent finer of 90 because we use those points because 0 0.06 is between 0 0.425 and 0 0.033 now since the x-axis is which is the sizes is in logarithmic scale let's use a logarithmic the so logarithmic of 0 0.425 minus logarithmic of 0 0.06 over logarithmic of 0 0.425 minus logarithmic of 0 0.033 is equal to 100 minus x which is x is the percent finer corresponding to 0 0.06 millimeter opening over 100 minus 90 so if we compute the value of x we will get 92.339 percent so see the difference here in our graphical method we got 95 but here in our Another method, we got 92.339%. So that's because our answers are all estimated values. Yeah. It's not exact. But it doesn't mean it is wrong. But it's not exact. So it will only be wrong if your answer is way far and your solution is not correct. So your answer will be wrong even if you got almost the exact answer. So I will check all your solutions properly so next let us look for let y let y be equal to the percent finer corresponding to 0 0.002 millimeter opening so again we will use the so again we will use the points that contain 0 0.02 millimeter that's um Point zero point zero zero three five with fifty percent finer and zero point zero zero one eight with forty percent finer. So let's use those two points because zero point zero zero two is between those two. Yeah. So again, logarithmic of zero point zero zero three five minus logarithmic of zero point zero zero two all over logarithmic of zero point zero three five minus logarithmic of zero point zero zero one eight is equal to fifty minus y which we are what we are looking for and over 50 minus 40 so compute compute we will get y is equal to 41.584 percent so same it's not the same and it's not the same again so same explanation why it's not the same not exact not the same but it doesn't mean it is wrong because as i've told you i will check all your solutions properly if you got the correct answer and you have the wrong solutions then that is wrong so therefore if we analyze this situation if we analyze this how many percent how many percent of the soil does pass to two millimeter so since mo there is um the largest size here of our particle of the soil is of the particle size of the soil is 0 0.425 um syempre 100% pass to 2 millimeters now passing 0 0.06 millimeter so from our example it's 92.339% and Passing 0.002 mm, it's 41.584%. So, gano nga ba kadami yung gravel? Or ilang percentage nga ba yung gravel? So, kung titingnan natin, gravel is greater than 2 mm. Pero, yung size dito, 0.425 mm na yung pinakamalaki. So, syempre, ibig sabihin, walang lumaki sa 2 mm. Therefore, walang gravel dito sa soil natin kasi walang mas malaki sa 2 mm kaya ang gravel natin 0% ngayon yung sand naman gano kadaming sand ang sand is between 2 to 0 0.06 mm yung kanyang particle size kanyang particle size so 
Ibig sabihin, aalamin lang natin um, ilang percent ng soil yung nag-retain between those sizes. So, from 2 mm to 0.06. So, that's 100% minus 92.339. That's 7.661%. And next is sa silt. So, silt particle size according to MIT. Uh, remember, we are um, following the MIT. If we do the ASTO, USDA, it's a different um, different values for sand, silt, clay values. Yeah. So, for silt, um, it's 0.06 mm to 0.002 mm. Now, how many percentage of silt that do we have in our example? So, it's easy. Just um, look at the passing 0.06%. So, that's 92.339 minus passing 0.002 mm opening. That's 41.584. Therefore, we have 50.755% for silt. So, we have 50% plus of silt in our sample soil. Now, last is the clay. So, clay are those particle size less than 0.02 mm. So, therefore, passing 0.02 mm, that's 41.584%. So, therefore, 41.584% yung clay dun sa sample natin. So, checking, syempre, dapat total niyan is 100%. So, see the difference? Magkaiba yung sagot. Uh, magkaiba, pero hindi mali. Yan, parehas, tama. Magkakamali ka lang kapag mali yung solution mo, syempre. Or, hindi ka naglagay ng unit. Natapos na natin yung letter A and letter B. Ngayon, pinapagawa pa sa ating letter C and letter D. Um, kayo na ang gagawa niyan. Ayan. Part na yan ng assignment niyo. Post ko na lang dun sa accounts natin for formality. Pero yon assignment niyo na si C and D. Same concept, uh, gagawin niyo siya. So, two methods using the graphical and also the analytical methods of solving USDA and ASTO. So, that's it for our discussion of our topic in Module 2. Thank you for listening. If you have questions, you can comment your questions down below the comment box or you can message me through one of my accounts that I have given to you. And don't forget to click like and subscribe. Thank you.